Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cardiology Lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickam. I am a cardiologist. Today we are going to look at uh, the effect of various maneuvers on halt murmurs, especially squatting, valsava, standing, lying down and using amyl nitrate. Let us see how these uh, maneuvers affect the halt murmurs arising from the mitral valve, the aortic valve or in patients with the ventricular septal defect or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So, let us begin. Before we go into the details of uh, what changes we see in murmurs with various cardiac maneuvers, so let us just brush up our concept of cardiac auscultation. Most of you are familiar with this cardiac auscultation, so I am going to run through this very quickly. At the apex, we palpate the apical impulse and, and put the diaphragm there and listen to the heart sounds. The systolic murmurs can be best heard using the diaphragm, whereas low frequency diastolic murmurs are heard using the bell with the light pressure on, on the chest wall. At the lower left sternal border, we have the tricuspid area and uh, just a little bit above that is the area of listening for uh, ventricular septal defect. The left uh, second intercostal space is the area where we listen to pulmonic uh, murmurs and the right second intercostal space is the region where we listen to aortic murmurs. Whenever we hear a murmur in the aortic area, it is always prudent to listen to the neck for any evidence of a conducted bruit. No matter what, as a cardiac uh, evaluation, a carotid auscultation should be an integral part of a cardiac auscultation. The aortic murmur can also radiate it to the apex. Most importantly, the mitral regurg murmurs radiated to the left axilla and here we in the tricuspid area, we hear the tricuspid uh, regurgitation murmurs. Now, let us look at what happens with various maneuvers. We are going to look at, I know this chart looks extremely busy and confusing, but let me tell you by the time we finish this, you can deduct some generalizations which will help you to remember the effect of various maneuvers on the heart murmurs at various locations. So, first we are going to focus on the hemodynamic effects of uh, these various maneuvers. We are going to start off with the squatting. With squatting, there is an increase in preload along with afterload. There is an increase in heart rate, cardiac output and blood pressure. So, let us go through the effects first, then we are going to look at uh, particular situations such as uh, aortic stenosis, hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy, mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation, mitral valve prolapse and ventricular septal defect. The other valves do not really make a big difference, but we will cover them at the end. We talked about squatting, now let us move on to standing. When you stand, there is venous pooling of the blood that results in reduced uh, uh, preload. There is also because of the reduced preload, there is a reduction in the afterload that leads to an increase in heart rate, a drop in blood pressure and cardiac output. Well, so when you are straining, it decreases the preload. There is very little change in the afterload and there is a decrease in heart rate. Remember, Valsava is a maneuver that we use in patients with atrial flutter or fibrillation to bring down the rate and see what the underlying rhythm is, particularly in patients with atrial flutter. Valsava, because of reduction in the venous uh, return, leads to reduced cardiac output and because of a straining, it increases the blood pressure. Hand grip. Hand grip is kind of interesting because uh, when you do hand grip or when you are doing weight lifting, it does not change the preload in any appreciable manner. Think about hand grip is more as lifting weights. That increases the afterload, it increases the heart rate and it also increases the blood pressure. It may not change the cardiac output uh, to any significant degree. Amyl nitrate is similar to nitroglycerin. What happens when we take nitroglycerin? There is venous pooling, so the preload is reduced. There is arterial vasodilatation, which leads to reduction in the systemic vascular resistance. 
and because of the reduction in the systemic vascular resistance there is a drop in the blood pressure which leads to reflux tachycardia. Lying down basically improves venous return. You heard a lot of people with vasovagal syncope when they lie down their symptoms get less pronounced compared to when they are standing. It has no effect on the afterload or the heart rate. Then finally elevation of the leg produces an exaggerated response to what we see when a patient lies down. That is why patients uh, with uh, vasovagal syncope uh, quite often they lie down and when we see these patients in a hospital setup when they drop their blood pressure the first thing we do is we elevate their legs. By elevating the legs we can return almost 20 to 30 percent of the, the cardiac uh, preload to the heart which increases the cardiac output and also increases the blood pressure. In a hospital setting when somebody has a vasovagal reaction this is what we do we elevate their legs and hopefully that will improve the venous return and improve the cardiac output and blood pressure. Keeping this in mind now let us look at uh, individual cardiac conditions and see how they affect uh, the murmur. In patients when patients squat it is an increase in preload, increase in afterload, increase in cardiac output and increase in blood pressure. When there is an increase in preload the ventricle is distended so there is uh, increase in aortic systolic murmur. Whereas when a person is standing there is a decrease in venous return, decrease in afterload which basically leads to a decrease in the intensity of the aortic stenosis murmur. Similarly Valsava also decreases the intensity of the aortic murmur and hand grip also decreases the aortic systolic murmur. Amyl nitrate by causing vasodilatation it uh, increases the aortic systolic murmur. Lying down which increases the venous return just like squatting also increases the venous return. So anything that increases the venous return or the preload leads to an increase in the intensity of the aortic stenosis murmur. There is always a difference between aortic stenosis and hokum which is the hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Both are related to left ventricular outflow tract obstruction but aortic stenosis is a fixed obstruction whereas uh, hypertrophic uh, obstructive cardiomyopathy is a dynamic obstruction. If the cavity size is small the murmur gets intensified. If there is a good venous return and if the ventricle is filled completely then the murmur becomes uh, less pronounced. So let us look at it. In squatting there is a significant increase in venous return when with increased venous return with increased left ventricular end diastolic volume there is a decrease in the hokum systolic murmur. Similarly any condition that decreases the preload such as standing valsava also increase the murmur of uh, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Lying down or leg elevation which increases the venous return leads to a decrease in the murmur of uh, hokum. So it is important to see the differences between the aortic murmur and the systolic murmur related to hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. They almost go in the opposite direction. So to simplify this increase venous return increases the aortic stenosis murmur, increase preload decreases the hokum systolic murmur intensity and the same thing holds good for reduced venous return where the aortic murmur is reduced while the hokum murmur becomes more intensified. So this is one group now we are going to move on to mitral stenosis. In mitral stenosis when the person squats there is an increase in preload and increase in preload increases the volume going across the stenotic mitral valve. So it increases the mitral diastolic rumble. Any condition that decreases the venous return to the left heart 
this decrease in left ventricular left atrial volume a yeah, decrease in left atrial volume leads to a decrease in the intensity of the mitral stenosis murmur similarly when there is an increase venous return the murmur of mitral stenosis gets more intensified whereas mitral regurgitation is, is the blood going from the left ventricle into a low pressure left atrium anything that increases the venous return to the heart. So, there is more blood coming into the left atrium and the left ventricle. So, when the ventricle contracts, there is more blood backing into the left atrium. As a result, increased left ventricular end diastolic volume leads to an increase in the intensity of the mitral regurgitation murmur. So, look at this condition here. Squatting increases the preload that leads to an increase in mitral regurgitation murmur while standing and valsava decrease the venous return that leads to a decrease in the mitral regurgitation murmur. Similarly, the conditions that increase the preload such as lying or leg elevation leads to an increase in the intensity of the mitral regurgitation murmur. Let us contrast mitral regurgitation murmur with that of mitral valve prolapse. Mitral valve prolapse act in the opposite direction of the changes that we see with pure mitral regurgitation because the mitral valve prolapse is based on the cavity size and also based on the preload. If the preload is increased, the left ventricular volume is bigger. So, the leaflets do not co-apt as a result uh, the intensity of the murmur decreases. Whereas, a decrease in left ventricular volume, whereas an increase in left ventricular end diastolic volume leads to an increase in the mitral valve prolapse murmur. Similarly, when, when there is an increase in the preload, there is a decrease in the mitral valve murmur. Now, let us look at finally, ventricular septal defect, it should be VSD, sorry about that. When there is an increase in volume in the left ventricle, the regurgitant jet is going to go into the right ventricle. As a result, uh, there is uh, intensification of the murmur with increase in volume. Similarly, when there is a decrease in volume, there is less blood going through the ventricular septal defect, thus the murmur intensity is decreased. Similarly, the hand grip which increases uh, the afterload makes the ventricle pump more blood into the right side of the heart, thus increasing the murmur. Conditions such as lying and elevation increase the venous return which leads to more blood going into the right ventricle from the left ventricle that produces an increase in intensity of the ventricular septal defect murmur. So, let us move on. Here are some examples of uh, a patient with uh, hokum after valsava or standing. We said any time there is a decrease in preload, any time there is a decrease in left ventricular volume, the murmur becomes more intensified and you can see this compared to the resting condition. Whereas, squatting which increases venous return, it increases the left ventricular cavity size thus decreasing the murmur. Whereas, in patients with aortic stenosis, we see the opposite with uh, reduced venous return, the murmur gets softer because there is less blood going through the stenotic aortic valve. Whereas, squatting with increased uh, venous return on a fixed obstruction, the murmur becomes more intensified. Here is a simplification of uh, hokum and mitral valve prolapse. When you are doing valve sava or standing, there is redu reduction in the venous return which increases the murmur of uh, hokum and mitral valve prolapse. Squatting which increases the venous return to the left heart results in softer murmur coming from the hokum and mitral valve prolapse patients. This is mitral valve prolapse we already talked about when they are standing there is a decreased venous return which leads to a reduced left ventricular cavity. So, the mitral valves close earlier as a result the murmur gets longer uh, with standing and that leads to a longer systolic murmur whereas, uh, uh, during squatting the ventricle is uh, completely filled with more blood. So, it takes longer time for the valves to co-apt and that reduces the 
systolic murmur uh, duration. In this chart, I just want to focus on these two columns. We talked about the effects of various uh, physical maneuvers and of course, amyl nitrate. Now, we are going to talk about uh, inspiratory and expiratory changes and their effect on cardiac murmurs. Now, let us look at here. Most murmurs on the right side of the heart increase with inspiration whereas the left sided murmurs increase during expiration. So, the aortic stenosis murmur increases on expiration whereas the mitral valve prolapse has no effect and hokum has no effect. So, it is important to remember the respiratory changes and their effects primarily on the right sided murmurs and of course, the aortic stenosis since it does not affect uh, the mitral valve prolapse or Hocum patients. Valsava is kind of interesting because Valsava has four different phases. In the initial phases, there is an increase in the mean arterial pressure with a decrease in the heart rate. Because when we do Valsava, as you know, when we strain, the heart rate goes down and the blood pressure goes up. And we see this response on a monitor because we are trying to get their heart rate down to look for any evidence of flutter waves in patients with flutter. This is going to be followed by a gradual return during phase 2 and there is another second blip followed by another increase in the blood pressure before it normalizes. So, during these four phases, uh, we see different uh, variations of blood pressure and heart rate changes. That is why if you want to see any changes in heart rate, we have to look for the changes in the first 5 to 10 seconds uh, after the Valsava maneuver is started. Here is a different way of looking at the venous return, preload and afterload and some drug effects also. Of course, this chart is uh, putting it in a different manner, but it, it covers the same thing which we talked about that anything that decreases the venous return increases the murmur of hokum and mitral valve prolapse while it decreases the murmur of aortic stenosis, mitral regurgitation and ventricular septal defect. Whereas, an increase in venous return leads to an increase in murmur of mitral stenosis, aortic stenosis, mitral regurgitation, ventricular septal defect except in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and mitral valve prolapse, it decreases the murmur. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is in a nutshell about various maneuvers that we can do at bedside to understand the hemodynamic changes related to them and how the heart murmurs respond. Even though this chart looks pretty complex, but if we simplify it, anything that increases the preload increases the stenotic murmurs except in patients with uh, hokum, which is a dynamic obstruction. And anything that decreases the venous return increases the murmur of hokum and mitral valve prolapse. I hope this presentation has been helpful to you and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our uh, cardiology lectures playlist where we have more than 125 lectures on cardiology related topics. Thank you so much for your time. I am Dr. Nick Nickham and we will see you next time.